What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and today I'm heading to Bern, Switzerland on a day trip. Let's go get the shot. This is just a day trip. We're going to Bern for the afternoon and when you go to a place like that for the afternoon what you're looking for is just one shot. We're going to hang around there until the golden and blue hour happens and then try to get one really good shot. So this is a getting the shot episode in which I take you through the process of finding a shot from start to finish. And right now we're headed to Bern and then we'll do some location scouting. We'll look around a little bit and probably take some daylight photos. And then I'll take you through the actual shot, the big shot, the one that I'm going for. Let's go. So we made it to Bern and the first assignment of any travel photographer is to go out and scout locations. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. We climbed up the hill on the other side of uh, the old town. You've got the old town in the background and we we're just looking for an overview of the city to shoot. And there's a lot of distraction in the way, lots of trees in the foreground. So it's going to be too hard for us to shoot this particular shot, I think, um, down on the bridge below uh, at the river level. I think there's some cool shots. So there's that and potentially a zoom shot from just further up so we'll probably try those things a little bit later on once the light gets good now let's go get ice cream Okay, so I'm here at the location that I wanted to shoot. Last time I was in Bern, I didn't get the chance to shoot this because I wanted to be way up top. So I missed out on this shot. Now, when you're shooting travel photography, you really want to get like two or three locations. So this isn't the only thing I'm going to be shooting today at dusk. I'll also probably run down and then up the mountain as well uh, to try to get a couple shots here at the golden hour and maybe later into the blue hour. Now, I'm shooting during the golden hour for this shot. Uh, cities just like landscapes you want to be shooting during that soft morning light sunrise sunset and then after the sun goes down in what we call the blue hour when you get that cool blue sky now if you know my photography you know i like finding water and that's what i've done here there's uh the river flowing under this bridge you've got these really cool houses right backed onto the water and you've got the sun right in the background so what i'm going to do to make this shot happen is i'm going to shoot at about probably f11 and I'm going to shoot with a gradient ND filter on the lens just to soften or darken the sky while brightening the foreground. And I'll probably shoot two images, one slightly overexposed and one slightly underexposed, and then bracket them together in Photoshop. Although we'll see how it goes. Let's go do it. So that's what I love about photography is like you get like 15 minutes of good light and you're just running around. It's kind of a bit of a sport and I love that. But we're going to now run up the hill and try to get a couple of shots with the big lens and we'll see what happens up there. Anyways, that's it for me out in the field. I'm going to now take you back home. Whew. Once I get my energy back, I'm going to take you back home and I'm going to show you how I edit these, this photo that I took here in Lightroom and show you the finished product. So let's go back home. So after a good night's sleep, I'm up and in the digital darkroom. I've just gone through and buzzed through all my images and edited them. So it took me probably about two hours to edit all my images. And I'm going to walk you through those images before I get into uh, the one that I told you. I was going to show you how I edited and, uh, and took you from start to finish. So I thought it would be cool just to walk you through the images from the day really quickly. This is me hard at work. As you can see, this is what you do in the middle of the day. You go out, you scout, and then you eat ice cream. You eat ice cream, you find a bench to sleep on when you wait for the good light. So that's what you do. You just eat ice cream. That's my job. It's not bad, right? <laughs> Moving on, um, let's go. Um, just as the light was a little bit soft, and my computer's slow, so bear with me a little bit. The light was a little bit soft. I tried to shoot some of these rooftops in Burn that are really cool. And you can see it came out quite well. I had to edit it kind of hard. I used Nick software for this, ColorFX Pro. But I like how it came out. I just like the simplicity of it, and I like the lines. So 
yeah, that's that's all right. And I also did a black and white version of that. Um, I don't do a lot of black and white, as you know. Um, so moving into this black and white stuff, I'm I'm really trying to focus on finding images that I can use as black and white before I shoot, rather than just getting home and seeing the image and being like, you know, that might be cool in black and white. Uh, I'm trying to actually see things in black and white. And that's the little project I'm working on is kind of trying to build some black and white photos into my portfolio as well as the really colorful stuff I'm more known for. Um, again, I was just out scouting and shooting, so that's a, a nothing photo, as is this. I was kind of just shooting some daylight stuff. That's a little HDR mixed in there. Um, this is where the light started getting decent, and this was my location, um, right on the bridge and burn. Um, but again, the light's a little bit too harsh here. Um, usually, I have a bit of a game plan um, when I'm shooting, is I'm trying to find kind of like a spot that I can shoot multiple things really, really quickly. And this bridge was perfect for it because the sun was setting over here. And so right before sunset, it was casting a really soft light on this side. And so I can, sh <clears throat> excuse me, I can shoot this side first. And then as the sun goes down, you get the color popping in the sky here. You can shoot this direction and then you can move off to another location. So you can really shoot two things from one location, which is why I picked this bridge. Um, while I was waiting for the light to go down, I also went searching for another spot to shoot. I found this spot along the water that I liked. I really liked it, actually. When I was down there, I loved this spot, and I actually considered staying down here. As you'll see from later in the day, I'm glad I didn't. Uh, this is just an HDR shot I took um, while messing around. Um, so now the light's getting good. I shot this HDR again right as the sun's hitting. I'm trying to star the light here. And uh, I like how it came out. I'm not a massive HDR guy, but I've, as you can see through these photos, I do it a little bit during this really harsh light just for something to do because I'm bored waiting for the really good light. Um, again, this is the exact same thing, just zoomed in a bit, so I won't even stay on that. This is where the light started getting good. So you can see the light, the sun's right on the horizon, basically just dipped down. So you're getting this nice soft light over here on this side. And it's still soft enough light that you're not getting really good, uh, really heavy shadows here. So it comes out cool. Uh, again, same thing. Just zoomed in a little bit more. Oh, man, my computer is slow. Anyway, um, yeah, so still shooting this soft light, trying to incorporate these curves and these lines uh, into the shot. And, um, man, this computer is slow. Again, this is what that HDR shot was. This is non-HDR uh, th for the same thing. So, um, yeah. Uh, I really like this in the camera. And then now that I have it on my computer, I'm not a fan. I was really trying to get this curve and just a really interesting angle. And it's one of those things that sometimes you see something in the little viewfinder and it looks really cool. And then you get it on the computer and it's not nearly as cool as you thought it was. And that's definitely the case with this image. Uh, tried to me mess around with a little bit of tilt shift. This one is not a tilt shift, but um, this was my starting point. You can see this is what I ended up with. Just fading everything down into this and putting the focus here to kind of give a tilt shift miniature effect. I like how it came out considering I was still just waiting for the light. Um, and now this is where the light hit. So the sun's just gone past the horizon. It's casting these color beams up here and we got phenomenal light for about 15 minutes it was just beautiful light and so I saw it happening and I shot this and then I just raced across the bridge um, now this is the image I'm gonna show you how I edited so this is um, oh yeah we'll come back to it really quick but this is the final result of it here um, some more of that stuff this one I'm really happy with I love how that came out I love the the structure of it it's just cool and the light was so good and similar things you can see I'm basically just walking across a big bridge trying to find a good angle to shoot um, I tried to get both sides at first and then I got a little bit more simple later on like this I probably wish I would have gone even more simple and done something like just this here um, but you're trying to capture this and the the bottom here so it's a bit of a a big scene. Um, this is why I didn't like this scene. Uh, I went down, back down after the light got bad, but the light was harsh right on the background and it created all these problems. So I did an, uh, 
a black and white photo there and that's all I could do. So I'm really glad I stuck with on top of the bridge to get these shots instead of stuff down here. You can just see that this is an HDR but the light was just so harsh that it just killed all the colors. There was too many shadows too. It wasn't good. Um, this one kind of came out cool. This is with the 7200 millimeter lens zoomed right in and I do like how that came out. I'm sorry, I'm getting to this edit. I think there's more images. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then so we raced up the hill. Um, and we were trying to catch the blue hour, but we got this cr kind of crazy orange light instead of blue light, which is cool. I was happy with it. And I was trying to capture this curve, this curve, and then this curve leading to the parliament buildings. And you have the cathedral here. And I'm happy with how most of these came out. Um, later, they lit things up and it turned out a little bit better. So you can see here they're lit up, but then you get all these dark shadows. So uh, that stuff came out only okay, but I'm I'm still happy with it. I did one shot that I kind of like, this one where I zoomed right in and you get this curve and this curve and then the church right there, the little church. So yeah, and then just walking home, I shot this with the moon in the in the shot, but it's not a great image. Um, so let's get back to this image that I shot and that I told you I was going to shoot and show you how I edited it. So I mentioned that I was going to shoot two images and then paste them together. I was going to use uh, one image that was slightly overexposed. And when I said slightly overexposed, what I meant is exposed properly for the foreground. And I was going to shoot a second image that was exposed properly for the sky. And then I'm going to paste them together. And now there's an interesting article on Sing Ray Filters website right now about why you shouldn't use filters. And basically it's count it's a counter argument. They're saying you should use filters. But the, the thought nowadays is why do you shoot with filters when you can just paste two images together and have the exact same effect? Why pack around the filters? Well, I argue why not do both? So what that's exactly what I did here and I'll show you my filter setup. This is a terrible filter. I hate it. I can't wait to get rid of it. It's a Colkin filter, but it's a neutral density filter. So you can see how it's got the gradient there as well. And then you just slide it into the holder and then you set it up so you darken the sky and lighten the foreground. And now even using one of those, you can't always get it perfect. So this is the, the image shot properly exposed for the foreground. It's still a little bit blown out here. This is the image properly exposed for the sky and it's too dark down here. So if you use both, you can really pop extra color and get it even more perfect. And that's what I did. Um, I'm not going to show you the hard edit. I'll just bring you through what I did here and you'll see that I didn't change the exposure. This one, the um, overexposed image. Now, sorry, before I get into this, I did a video on blending images, on blending images in Photoshop, which is the process I used here. Um, so you can click anywhere on this screen right now and it'll bring you to that video in a new window. And uh, yeah, just so I can breeze through this quicker and you can just see the process rather than the, the fine-tuned details of that blending. So basically what I'm doing is I'm editing for the foreground here in Lightroom only. So I'm just bringing out all this stuff here just to work on the foreground, to make the foreground look cool. I do not care about what the sky looks like. And then for the sky image, I do the exact opposite. I'm only editing for the sky. I do not care what the foreground looks like. The one thing is I know that I'm going to have issues with this tower, so I brought out the shadows a lot in this um, image. But yeah, you're just editing for the sky. And then you open both of those images in um, Lightroom. You go edit or in Photoshop, edit in, and then I'm going to open both as layers in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, so now what Photoshop's doing right now is it's bringing both of these images in in RAW files. And it's creating them as layers. So you're going to have the two layers backed on top of each other. So you've got the bright image on top and then the dark image underneath it. And all I'm going to do is that blending image process I did in uh, in the last uh, video, in the blending, blending images video I showed you. I'm just going to do that process. But before I used a gradient, this time I'm going to use a brush. And the brush will be set at about... 500 long, let's go bigger. Let's go 800 pixels. Why do I still not have a brush? There we go. And I got to change this again. 800 pixels. And you see the hardness is way down. And then I'm going to put the opacity at about, let's go 75%. 
and then I'm just gonna oh sorry first you need to create in uh, a layer mask right here by clicking this and then it's gonna reveal everything that's on the image below it so we can just paint the sky and it's bringing out the sky from the image below when we do this And now I really want to get this part darker, kind of to match the exposure for over here. So I'm just going to bump this again, the opacity to about 95. And then I'm just going to do a little bit extra work on this side of the image. And we're done. That's your image. That's the image. And the beauty of it is you hit File, Save. And what it does is it creates a TIFF file. And I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again, but it creates a TIFF file and it will bounce you back to Lightroom. And then you'll have your TIFF file right there in your workflow. So this is my finished image. And I'm a huge fan of how it came out last time. From the top, I wasted my entire night trying to shoot one location that I thought was going to be perfect and turned out to be pretty average. And when I was going back through my images later, I saw this scene and I was like, why didn't I shoot that during the golden hour? And so I'm happy I got a second chance. Not everybody gets a second chance to shoot the same location again. And I did. So I'm stoked about it. I'm stoked about how this came out. And I hope you like the walkthrough process of getting a shot in Bern, Switzerland. Uh, and yeah, that gives you a little bit of insight into my thought process from getting a photo all the way to the photo editing process from start to finish. And yeah, that's it for the show. I want to urge you to subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming up. I'm leaving Switzerland now. I'm heading to Iceland and then to New York, Canada, and all over the place. Who knows what's coming up next? So it should be a really cool trip. I also want to urge you to head over to my website, brendansadventures.com. And when you do that, go find my newsletter on the sidebar and sign up for it. When you do that, you get a free copy of my adventure travel magazine, Vagabundo Magazine, which is cool. Lots of awesome travel photography in there, I promise you. Anyways, that's it for me. I've been talking way too long. I'm losing my voice. I'll catch you next time. Peace.